Hi guys, this is Game Music. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I was not planning to do this video, but um, I have a few things I want to talk about. Well, one specific thing actually. So, as you guys may know, Alberta has lifted most of its restrictions um, about COVID. So that includes social distancing, the mask by law, and because of that, things started to reopen. And I got the chance to go to the first indoors show since COVID hit, as well as my first Edmonton show since I moved here. And it was really awesome. I had a great night. So I went to see Platinum Blonde, which is an 80s Canadian, not really a hair metal, it's more like a pop hair pop band anyways um they were doing a donation uh concert for the mental health foundation and the ticket was minimum five dollars which is what i paid and later on i learned that it was actually a free concert for like the last minute guests so i'm just gonna um it doesn't affect my hands while i'm talking so it was at the River Cree Resort and Casino. First time for me getting in a casino. Um, not a fan of those. Never really was interested getting inside of one. So it was a lot of firsts for me. First time seeing Platinum Blonde. First time going on concert in Edmonton. Um, my last concert I went to was in 2019, if I'm correct. I went to see Paul Breck in Thunder Bay. You guys can actually watch the sort of vlog that I did on my channel. Um, excuse me. So I'm just gonna take this off. It's hot in here. I, we have a heat warning, so it's like plus 35. Ugh, okay. So the show was at 9, the doors open at 8. The show didn't start until like 9 15, 9 20, something like that. I don't know why, but it just happened. And me being the anxious, excited person in all situations in life. My stomach was rumbling in the last hour and because I'm also um, a punctual person, for me being one minute late is a big deal. So th them coming on stage after 15 minutes after they said they were coming, I was like, <sighs> but that's, that's just a, a problem for me. It's not a, it's not a big deal to be honest. They went on stage and they were great. So, um, I can actually brag about a lot of things. Um, the only thing I cannot brag about is meeting them, because I didn't. Kind of sad, but I will be going to see them next time they come to, uh, to uh, Edmonton. And I will definitely pay VIP to meet them, because they're great. So, um, I got there around 7, uh, went to do a little tour. I got ID'd, because... I look under the age of 30 and it's also because I was a new person so they're like we don't know you we want to see card I'm like okay <laughs> uh, the staff was really nice um, people were drinking I mean they have there's a bar you can drink alcohol inside which for me is kind of a weird situation because I don't do that personally um, if there's alcohol involved either I'll drink one and then I'll leave or I don't go at all <laughs> I'm, I'm not really good with those kind of things I felt like I was like one of the only pe person that was there for the music only but yeah so uh, I was actually waiting at the venue it's called the venue actually and uh, the security guy was looking at me weird like why are you here why don't you like play machines or whatever and I'm like I'm here only for the show and I'm new here so deal with it so I waited 45 minutes from the door and like five minutes before the, show, uh, the doors opened people started to gather and it's not well this like it's not designed for a concert hall compared to like the auditorium at the Bay which is there's a lobby for that like for us our lobby to wait was the hallway to go to the machines it was kind of weird um so when you enter there are two lanes one if you want to purchase a ticket 
And the second one, if you already purchased a ticket and you're having it hand, either it's paper or by phone, which I think is awesome. So I got my ticket in hand and the security guy says, you guys can go. And I was the first person in line and there's like three lanes and we get inside the one that's actually open and everyone's looking at me because I'm like the first person and they're like, can we help you? And I'm like, I'm here for the show. And they're like, oh, we're not ready yet. Give us five minutes. You need to change um, sides. And I'm like, I need to do aerobics. Okay. <laughs> so change lane. I was the, that's the thing I want to brag about. I was the first ticket purchaser to get his ticket scan for the show. For the first indoor show since COVID. Very happy about it. I also was the first person to buy merch in the general admission because I'm sure people in the VIP section bought it. Um, they had t-shirts. They had four t-shirts. Well, they had three t-shirts and a hoodie. Um, I got a shirt for my mother and a shirt for me. And then I sent her the picture and she's like, I want yours. And I'm like, I think you can buy it online, but the, the website is down, so whatever. I mean, if it comes to time to my parents are definitely going to go for sure. Anyways, so we get to the, I get to the actual um, music room. And it's actually kind of well designed. Most people didn't get it, but I kind of did. So because of COVID, they really want to like focus on you getting your space. But then at that, the moment you're seated, you can do whatever you want. So like get some beer, talk to people, but it's like as long as you get inside and you know where you're sitting, that's where they're focusing for focusing on. Um, so mine was uh, row um, section H, which was in the middle in the back. So the quality of sounds crap though. My ears were getting ripped from the inside most of the concert. Um, I was in the middle so I could see the stage but sadly there were two people in front of me that were like 6'2 so even when seated they were like really tall so I had to like scooch over but the fun part was on my left there was actually no one so I could sit just to see the best view uh, we could not take pictures or videos a lot of people got warned and, ex and escorted um, I did take two pictures. Oops. <laughs> um, I just took like glances. And they're not going to go on the internet whatsoever. It's just pictures for my mother. So she could actually see how it was. Um, so I was by myself. Um, I did talk to a few people around me. People that were actually friends from the 80s. And they were talking about their collection. It was really fun. Um, but guys, let me tell you about the band. There was only one original member, if I'm correct, um, it, who was the um, singer. His name is Mark, Mark Holmes. He was the only um, uh, original member that was there. I don't think he, the guitarist was Sergio. It didn't look like him, though. And, uh, and there was a drummer who's new. He started last year. Uh, but they're all great musicians. Some parts were a little bit weird, but I think it's just the sound re reverb. Uh, the lighting was great. The videography would have been a little bit better, but I think it's just like they're focusing more on the music itself than the actual, like what's going on on, on the screen. There were two big screens on each side. And what I liked was there were cameras and they show multiple angles. So like, one angle, you would see more the guitarist, one would see the, in the back of um, the drummer, one was focusing on uh, Mark, and then you would see the audience. I was not, sadly, on the, on the freaking um, screen. I would have liked to, but I was too far for it to catch me, and I was too small, so. Uh, Song-wise, it was actually pretty good. They did all of their best songs including 
which I think is one of their best albums. Um, they did songs. So they have four albums as Platinum Blonde. I know there's one as another name. But they did their best songs. They did Cry Over You. They did it as the last encore. People were screaming. Like they were lingering the moment because they knew it was going to be good. Um, they did that one, Standing in the Dark, Not in Love. Doesn't really matter. That was one of the encores, um, which I have a story about it. Uh, they did Valentine, Beautiful, Lost in Space. Um, somebody, oh, not somebody. Is it somebody somewhere? So, someone somewhere? No, I think somebody somewhere. I think that's what it's called. They did that one. Um, they did a lot of classics. They did some of the newest songs. Um, they did three covers, which I am very happy they did. The first one was sort of a surprise, but I was so happy. It was a song called Unbelievable by EMF, which is a 90s um, one-hit wonder. But the, the group nailed it. It was so good. I was on my feet from that moment on. Um, the second one they did was a tribute to one of the members of ZZ Top who sadly passed away last week, Dusty Hall. Uh, they did Sharp Dressed Man and the drummer was singing that song and he's actually pretty good. I liked it. I actually had a tear in my eye when they were talking about that group because at the end of each song they would put like the logo Platinum Blonde and when Mark was talking about ZZ Top, it slowly changed to ZZ Top and it just got me. I don't know why, like I'm not the biggest fan of ZZ Top, like I do know some of their songs but I'm not like a crazy fan. But I do understand the legacy behind the group as well as the passing that is so tragic. They just started their new tour that was actually postponed last year. And there's, from what I heard, they're gonna continue. Um, and they do have a date in Edmonton, but it's just gonna be very different. But yeah, so they did Shark Dress Man, and then at the encore they did Heroes by David Bowie, which is a song that I feel like I, every single 80s Canadian band does as a cover. It happened at Platinum Blonde, it happened at Glass Tiger in 2018. Like, what? <laughs> I just find it very interesting. Um, so when the encore started and they did Doesn't Really Matter, as well as Heroes and Crying Over You, I decided to go front row. I could not go to the stage because it's VIP and there's security, but they blocked it with chairs. And one of the rules was you have to keep the aisles clear, which didn't happen, but security just let it happen. And I was seeing people from the back going to the front. And I was like, fuck it. I don't care if I get escort escorted. I need to go front. I need to enjoy this. I've noticed that the sound was better at the front. And the party was just crazy. Um, I got to meet some people. And there was an incident where um, when I was going um, near the front, there's this group of frat boys that were just partying and they knew the songs. Like that's the craziest thing, they were younger than me, they knew the songs. And one of them, who was right in front of me, took his shirt off and threw it on the stage. I don't know if it made it, I don't think so. But I did see Mark just being like, oh, there's a shirt here. I was thinking like maybe panties could arrive, but it didn't happen. Um, and then one of his friends grabbed his beer and dunked it on the guy's head. I was behind that guy, so I got a few, a, a little bit of beer on me. And I, I, like, I couldn't be mad. Like, I was too close, and he was having fun. So I, I, I just laughed. And I was already sweaty, and I was already smelling like beer because people were drinking. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. So what I did is instead of staying in that in that pile, I just scooch a little bit more in the front. But then, that guy pushed me over and he jumped over the front of the VIP to VIP. And he wanted to get on stage. 
and security didn't like him. He started running and he got like on the chairs and security, like the, the, like the really big guys that were like, sit your ass down. And then two minutes later, I turn around and all the guys had their shirt off. They, they were drunk and they had their shirts off. And I'm like, well, that's a thing. All the girls that were around were like, oh my god, so cute. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like in my head, I'm like, I'm just going to concentrate on the show. Even though what's happening is like a once in a lifetime thing. Because I usually don't go like in the pit or whatever. Because I'm a little bit more well behaved. But just doing that was actually fun. What's wrong, babe? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Um, what did you buy? Fri fri Fritos? Frigos? I, I, <laughs> Fritos? MSG laden num noms. They're actually very good. Did I wake you up? Or did I bother you? Jeez. I don't think I actually wonder because I'm talking about the the part where all the guys had their shirts off first of all I don't think you would have went front where all the people were he just threw a bottle but I actually wonder if you get drunk would you actually take your shirt off and throw it no okay you're a little bit more well behaved. Well, also, you're not a frat boy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they got escorted. There was a party afterwards that I didn't know about, and I was like, I'm not going. But there was a party wow. afterwards, so probably there were. So, like. Yeah, the, there, was a, there was a party after the show yesterday. And I was like, I didn't know about it until like I got in the car and I checked my phone. And I was like, oh, there's a party. Okay, I'm just gonna go home. My voice was shot. And then I texted my boyfriend and I'm like, can you make me some tea? I wanna have my voice tomorrow. Which I did, my voice is okay. Um, but it was, a, it was a great experience. I don't think Ian would have liked it. He doesn't like loud noises. But um, after, uh, today I actually sent pictures to my mother because there are pictures on the Facebook page of the casino that were actually professional pictures. And there's one of them, you can see my back, but it's like really like at the bottom of the frame. Um, so I, yeah, no, I didn't get noticed. Like, the amount of girls, I saw like these, stereotypical Alberta woman like blonde hair super skinny they love their beard they have their boyfriends with them and I'm just like I really do not fit here I do not me I don't I do not want to be mean or whatsoever in my comments but that's the type of people I saw and also like Clan of Blonde is an 80s band so of course the fans would have grown up with them so they're like 40 50 and I'm 26, so <laughs> they're like, what is this child doing here? But, um, the next show we're going to together is not even in October. Because I'm going by myself in October. It's in March of next year. It's when we see Class Tiger. So, yeah. So the next concert I'm going to will be Hotel California. And I'm actually in the VIP because uh, I think the ticket was a little bit more expensive, but I really want to see them again. I saw them in Thunder Bay with my parents, and I absolutely loved the experience. And I want to see them again, because like, we did talk to the band afterwards, and they were super nice. One of them was French, which I thought was awesome. So yeah, my next concert is October. I'm probably going to do a video about it. But in the meantime, as for this channel, it's mostly eh, dead. 
I have a part-time job now and I'm super tired and the motivation is not here anymore. I'm kind of sad about it. However, I do post a little bit on Instagram if you guys want to check it out. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. I might have some other stuff coming. Maybe I'll have a boost of motivation <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, go check out Platinum Blonde. They're a great band. I suggest to, for you to listen to their third and fourth album. Uh, third one being Contact and the fourth one being Now or Never. I think there's a new album coming too, maybe in 2022. So that's going to be very exciting. Hopefully they'll come back. I'm definitely going to go back and see them. And this I'm going to be front row, center, right now. Because <laughs> it is about the love. I don't think he hears me. Alright, so I'll talk to you guys later. And um, yeah, go check out Platinum Blonde. Bye.